evening everyone um welcome back to the workshop um sorry i've been absent again for a few weeks uh work has been work in the rubbish part of my rotor but hey ho we are here um a couple of things before i start tonight pinned to the top of the chat um is the link to the gofundme page for steve's uh raffle and auction so if you haven't bought your tickets yet please head up there it's an awesome awesome charity um alzheimer's is a uh, horrendous um for the person that suffers from it and also for the family so if we can give them some support please head over to that and also i'm just putting into the chat now a link to claire's crafty corner now if you don't follow claire claire's an awesome resin artist um she is four subscribers from seventy thousand. So if you don't stop it, Claire, um, please head over, uh, hit that little subscribe button, um, and let's get it to the 70,000 mark. Right, let's bring in the earworms. So we have one at the moment. Uh, we have the Wood Jedi himself, Mr. Wayne the Wood Turner. Good evening, everybody. Good afternoon. Hope you all and keeping well. Steve from SK Crafts is going to be joining us in a little bit and we'll talk more about the auction then. So what are we doing tonight? We're going to look, it's a similar thing to what Wayne did last night um, with rubbish blanks or blanks that you're not quite sure what to do with. Um, so we all know you buy those big sacks, 25 kilo sack for however much it costs and you always end up with silly little small blanks or you'll do a project out of a bit of wood and you'll end up with silly off cuts so we're going to do something with them and we're going to make some get this right incense holders not incense burners <laughs> <laughs> um so we've got the traditional incense six thanks to mum because she brought these to me today um and the little cones that you get so let's get a bit on the lathe um, while we wait for Steve to come in. So we're going to start with the square bit. Um, that one. No, top one. I'm going to start with the square bit. I want to keep um, the outside square if I can. I might just take the corners off. Um, this bit of wood is actually an off cut um, from Dale at Maple Trees Studio's new workshop. Um, Last time I was up there, I come back with a few off cuts um, and said, yeah, I can make something out of them. So this is about three and a half inches, uh, just under four, actually. Uh, four inches in diameter. Um, it's about 30 mil thick. I've already put a tenon on the back of it just so I can hold it in the chuck. Um, I've got gripper jaws on to do that. And we're going to do this one so you can hold the sticks and the cones so while i'm getting ready for that if wayne if you want to let us know who's in i certainly will i will find a bowl so i think i've got to the the top of the list so we've got there uh, wood wood wizardry by colin in uh ward uh wilson from the west coast of arizona whole oh, other country. country uh steve sk crafts um brian with a y mark l can you hear me uh peter and twisted trees i need this in i need a color i need a color anita finally got her parcel from me um barry chitty hi barry laurie Shane Hurst, Adam Isla Woodturn, Emma Aldridge. That's my sister. Fred, that's your sister. It is. She said hello, bro. <laughs> uh, Fred, Fred Gulliver, James Crawford, Tony Smith, Jacob from Jacked Up Leatherworks. Jacked Up on Mountain Dew. Jacked Up on Mountain Dew. <laughs> Uh, right, Emma, Emma's going to try and make you blush. I can see that happening. 
Yeah, whatever. He says, hi, I think my brother is amazing at what he makes, and I'm very proud of him. Oh, cheers, this. What's she after? I have got no idea. She hasn't said. Uh, Nick Castle's in. Peter Corcoran. Paul Houghton. Uh, going down. Mark Stroughton. Douglas Mungham. Oh, she's saying she's not, she's not after anything. Yeah, I believe that. And that's us up to now. And we have got 39 people in at the moment. Brilliant. With only, six, with only six thumbs up. Come on, guys. Uh, Brian's just come in. Good evening, Brian. And Hi, Andrew Brian. from EG... EGK Woodworks is in. Rockstar. Mr. Mr. Uh, I've got two hollowers. <laughs> and Steve's here. Evening, Steve. Good evening. Hey, Steve. How are you, mate? I'm good. How is everybody? Yeah, not bad. Very Thanks well. Thanks for the invite. Yeah. Thanks for the invite. That's all right, mate. Right, seeing as how Steve's in, I'll just post, um, I'll just stick in the link to the actual auction, which is on the 21st of this month and that's in there so everybody can see where it is oh. they said the GoFundMe page is linked to the top Steve do you want to tell everyone what it is all about yeah okay um, most of you will be aware that last year obviously we did um, the makers auction for the first time for the Salvation Army um, Everybody was amazing. We raised nearly £5,000, which is absolutely fantastic. So thank you, everybody, who took part last year. Um, so this year, we decided to do it again. But this year, we thought we'd do it with what well, I asked you. I asked a few people. And a lot of people know somebody or some one in their family or a close friend or relative or whatever who have actually suffered with dementia. And it's a horrible disease. I personally went through it with my, with my nan. And I think a lot of people have gone through it and we all agree that it's absolutely an atrocious disease. So we thought that we would try and do something for dementia. So the chat we came up with was, was Dementia UK. Um, now, unfortunately, there's no cure for dementia. But what Dementia UK does is it actually supports the families of the loved ones who are going through dementia. So if the family's living away or they can't get access to visit the loved one, then Dementia UK do Zoom calls, they do internet-based calls, they arrange transport for people to go and visit their loved ones. So actually, they're actually a support group more than a cure group. Um, so I've had some contact with Dementia UK. So as the video, short video of the Maker's Auction video, um, a young lady called Rachel has been supporting me. She's now been promoted which is good news, but I've now been passed on to another lady called Mia. So um, she's going to agree, so once the auction's complete, to do a thank you video, which what I asked Salvation Army to do, but never had no response. But never mind. Um, So basically the way the auction is, we've had 13 pieces donated, which are going to be auctioned off on the night of the 21st of this month. Uh, the live will start about 7, no, 7.45, sorry, and the auction won't start till about 8 o'clock. Each item will have a five-minute auction time. Uh, there'll be myself, Nick, and a couple of guests pushing the auction along. And uh, hopefully we can raise some funds on the night. At the moment, we've got a raffle going on. There's four items in raffle. Um, tickets are £2 each. You pay for the tickets via GoFundMe. There's been a bit of confusion about leaving a message for the raffle number. So anybody who buys raffle tickets, just message me personally or send me an email or whatever. And uh, I will add you to the raffle. Um, the raffles are going to be drawn on the night of the 21st. And all prizes will be shipped. All their names, whoever win the raffle, will be passed over to the donator. And then shipping will be sorted out between the winning raffle purchaser or the, the, the winning bidder and the, uh, the person who's donated. So basically the same as last year, just for a different charity cause. Excellent cause. Excellent cause. Right, uh, while Steve was doing that, Robert Dolman's just come in and Glenn, the Yorkshire git, is here as well. Evening, Glenn. 
So what I've done with this bit is I've literally just put a little dish in here. Um, and as I said, this bit's going to be uh, for both the incense cone and the incense stick. Now, we all know if you put burning stuff on wood, it's going to scorch. Um, so to make it a little bit safer, what I've brought is these were on Amazon. I think I've got 20 for a couple of quid. Um, they're down as dog tag blanks. Um, I presume you have to drill the hole in. But what they are ideal for is sitting in there uh, once I've got it flat. And then the actual cone can sit on top of there and won't burn the wood. Are they self adhesive? And they got the back. Murray's no, wood not, creations mate. are just coming as well. Even so I'll just I'll just put a bit of CA on there. They're meant for like punching uh, letters and dog tags and stuff, but for stuff like this, I thought they were ideal. And the best thing is, if you're from Yorkshire or somewhere like that, they're cheap. <laughs> right. <Wallace>. So, be <laughs> so before we do that, we are just going to take the corners off. Um, there is a little bit of damage here, but as I said, this is an off-cut um, from Dale's new workshop. And then I'll introduce you to the new sander. Because yesterday was new till Wednesday in the workshop. Now, it's a square bit of wood. Um, so just be careful of your fingers. You don't want them getting over that tool rest. Pete's just put in there that CA isn't very good with heat. It does tend to melt with heat. With heat. Okay. So um, ordinary okay. ordinary wood glue might be a better option. Okay. Or well, we've got some two-part epoxy. I can always... I might not use a spindle gouge. Just go from a bowl gouge. I don't want to make this round, but what I do want to do is just take take the corners off. All right. So as I said, it was new till Wednesday yesterday. Um, so I have treated myself to a right-angled drill. Um, this is a Makita one. Um, I think it was about 120 quid off Amazon. Maybe a little bit more. But to go with that... I've also treated myself to the uh, Simon Hope quick change arbors. So rather than keep changing your sandpaper, you can just change the arbor. Grand. Bill Miller's just come in as well. And he hey, says he's him. fishing. He's fishing in a subdivision pond in his backyard, in his backyard, and watching and listening to your video. It doesn't get any better than this. There you go. Fishing in your back garden. Well, obviously in a pond. <laughs> um, How cool that? Drury's wood turn has just come in. Rod in one um, hand, bear in the other. Yeah, and Emma yeah. has said that Uncle Alan uh, will be proud of you following in his footsteps, but taking it further than what he did. And Shug's in the house. I didn't realise my uncle did would turn him. I've been quite fortunate. I've had a, a few nice commissions. Um, some people that may have seen I put a, a bit of a cryptic post up today, uh, the other day, um, about some work that's going on the big screen. Um, I dropped that off to a film set this morning. So, super excited about that. I did have to ask the family who the actress is. <laughs> Apparently she's quite big. Never heard of her, but... Who is she? Uh, Olivia Coleman. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. She's been in loads of stuff. 
Yeah, once they said uh, Doris from Hot Fuzz been around the station a few times, it was like, oh, I know you're talking about now. Is that being filled in the UK, take up? Yeah, literally down the road from me, Steve, um, in Arundel. Uh, Tim from TFT Turners just come in, and Mark L has said he's popping in and out of the chat. He's doing some laser testing, and guess what? You can use a laser to make gaskets out of gasket material. <laughs> nice. Good idea. good idea, actually. One to the good old days of. Well. What happened to the good old days of um, tapping them out on the piece you're going to make this gasket for? Exactly. That's what I used to bloody do. <laughs> That's how I used to. That's how I was taught and all. I remember. I forget what car I had, but the EGR valve went on it. And someone put, why don't you just cut a Coke can and put it in there? Hmm. All right, Emma's, Emma's put in, this must have been about your, your Uncle Alan, he did some whittling, uh, so he made a couple of vases he used to show to your brothers. Uh, I obviously wasn't privileged enough, but hey, hey. Uh, Is that electric, so Scott, the sander? Yeah. Yeah. It is a little bit heavy. Um, tonight is the first time I've had it out, but... It's a tool I've wanted for a little while. <laughs> well, but yeah, the, the me as well, and I got uh, I got gifted one, uh, which was very nice. That was Terry Cox, who were in the States. Um I don't find the, the top speed on the right angle drills the same as no. drilly. Yeah, it's on its top now. Let's see how many is it. Alright. So because it's still We're got 50 that edge. watching at the minute. Um, because it's still got that edge. Um, I'm not going to Yorkshire grit it uh, or wax it. I'm actually just going to go for an oil finish. Um, just because I value my fingers. That's it mainly. Um, before I do that, we obviously need to put a hole in. Um, so I'm just going to go for a corner. And this is just a two mil drill bit let's just lock the lathe and I'm just going to put it in a little bit of an angle so when the stick's in there all the bits that drop off drop into the bowl So we'll see how time goes tonight. We might get a couple of different designs done. With these, um, I think Tunage Dubois has done a video on them. Uh, there's a couple of other videos of Turners that have done them, uh, put their home, their own designs on. So you can be as creative as you want. Cool. We might even get some colour out there. You're just 20 minutes in at the moment, Scott. I take it was the end of a beam, was it? Or post? Or... Yeah, so I think this was um, a bit of the post that went around uh, Dale's garage doors. Right. It's just a sliver off the end of that. So, you know, there's still there's still plenty that can be done with that. You had a busy day, day, Steve? Yeah, I've been hanging doors. Um, oh, nice. Oh, it's, <laughs> yes. Uh, so, so, don't get me wrong, not, it's not 
just one of those jobs where you got to keep lifting in and out, in and out, in and out, to get your, to get your perfect fit in you. Yeah. Um, and that's like, we've been there so long now, I just want the job finished. So it's like, keep going, keep going. <laughs> get it done. <laughs> get it done out of the way. <laughs> but I'm only there. I've, I've, I've done all the doors. I've done six doors today. So I've just got to put the handles on tomorrow and the latches in. So uh, get that done tomorrow and I'll be finished. I'm on another job Monday, fit in the kitchen. So Excellent. Well, keeping you busy then. Oh, it's been manic this year. Absolutely manic. Nice. Right. Can I get the towel? Better than not having any work. Yeah, yeah. I know. I totally agree. Yeah. I mean, I had 11 months out when COVID hit. So um, I'm making the most of it this year. So. so all I've got here is just a piece of ash. Um, this is it's a table protector, but it's also anti-slip. Um, and when I put the tenon on, I'd done it between centers using the ring center. So it's already left the indent there. So I can make sure I get it square when I uh, go to reverse it to take the tenon off. How's your club's demos going, Steve? Very well. Got loads. I've got about 14, but for next year already. Nice. Excellent. RPT next? Uh, I don't know about that. I don't know. Time will tell. Maybe for when I retire, but we'll see what happens in the future. I don't want to be a builder for the rest of my life, that's for sure. It's hard graft. I don't like it. <laughs> It's nice to see uh, young Katie from Turner. As, uh, Taylor's Murfield has got her RPT. Definitely. Absolutely. She well deserves it. Yeah. Right. Andrew's having to leave. He's had um, a long working day and only had four hours sleep. Have a good one, mate. Take it easy, mate. Yeah, he's, he's a bit short on sleep. I mean, he's a bit short on everything. <laughs> <laughs> Not number one, all of us. Uh, Shook said it's hard, yeah, it's hard work carrying them number one hollows around. <laughs> Not that he's so sore on, on the subject, but uh, you know, he'll be speaking to Jacob soon when he gets his quiver for it. Right. There we well, go. Chris, Christmas is around the corner. Huey. If you're a good boy, your missus might buy you one. It's not long now to Christmas, is it? Oh, give over. <laughs> okay. My crewmate did get the ump that I was playing Christmas songs in the ambulance the other day on the 4th of October, but... Oh, dear me. He had wound me up. Um, <laughs> Drury's Wood Turn's been making snowmen today. Nice. So, we've turned the tenon off. Um, it's down to probably just a couple of mil in there now. And all I'm doing is I'm just using a carving, little carving knife, just to take that last little spoon off. carving chisel. Yeah, does the job. I've never turned a spring or carved a spring, but it does the job. Um, and then what I'll do is I've got a sanding pad that we will pop on there. But we will pop in some glue. Um, so Sugar said, as they say in the Sweeney, shut it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so as we said, CA is not brilliant. We use a little bit of clear Gorilla Glue. 
So I think Colin means L there. Price of L ain't half gone up. Yeah, every all the wood's gone up for turning. Absolutely, all of it. It's ridiculous. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Ridiculous. There's not a hell of a lot of elm about. No. I am going to go and have a look at those boards over, uh, Wayne. Oh, yeah, I would as well, if I was you, definitely. So, right, we'll pop that one there to dry. Let's do... Let's do a funny shape one. All right, let's pop the chart. Right, hey, Chris from um, Billy Woodworks is in. Hi, Chris. Uh, what's this? Bit of sycamore. So no, he meant the price oh, of these you, <laughs> Yeah. Um, artistic license on this is entirely up to you. I'm just going to move the tail stock out of the way before I stab my elbow. Go back over there. So all these bits, um, these little bits come from a bag from Axminster. Down in Sittingbourne, and I think this bag was 50 or quid, and a lot of it was small bits. So it's just what can you do with them? If anybody hasn't seen Steve's um, video uh, live from Sunday, the, the hashtag week for this month is cauldrons. Mm. Yeah. We did hashtag witch last year for Halloween. So I thought we'd do cold. So we thought we'd do cauldron this month. You want a snake peri view? I started. Yeah. But that's as far as I got. <laughs> I bet you can't guess what it's going to be turned into. A cauldron. Well, a cauldron, but what's the cauldron going to be for? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was hoping to have it done before tonight, but today's been a little bit. This is why we go. This is why we've done it for two weeks. I know it's hashtag week, but um, this is why we do it for two weeks because everybody's got all the time. You know, I mean, most people work and people have mm. commitments, so a week's not long enough for it. That's a bit of pressure on people. Yeah. Yeah. So, t today is my only day off this week, so I do six out of seven days. Just, just like. So we're just gonna put a little, little more in the bottom. So Brian with a Y is asking which lathe you've got, Scott. He's looking for. He's looking at the change and needs some recommendations. So this is the Axminster. 1218 VS, but they've rebadged it. I think it's now the 305. Um, yeah, 305 it will be, probably. Awesome little lathe. Um, has got its downfalls. Um, but then I've had this now 2016. Um, I brought this and love it. Great little lathe. Um, I have actually got another one next door that I'm in the process of rebuilding. Um, there is a change coming with lathe in the workshop um, for my main lathe, but these will be staying uh, and will be used for my demo lathe or teaching lathes. Right, let's get some Wonderful. sheep into this. Sorry, for Brian. It really all depends on what the, the, for Brian. This is it. Really all depends on what you want to turn, Brian, as to what type of lathe you want to go for. The thing to remember is is that you can turn small stuff on a big lathe, but you can't turn big stuff on a small lathe. Yeah, this is true. My only advice, lathe wise, would be. If you can, me personally, I don't like a Reeves drive. Um, but I said that's my personal thing. I just the one I had, I just found really annoying and clunky. And 
Yeah. And buy the best lathe you can afford. Because if not, you'll yeah, only regret the... it. Exactly, exactly. Right, Emma's just put in that Auntie Jo said, can you make one of those for her? Well, I can. I don't know when it'll be, but I can do it. So a little dish here. I still think for the price of the coronet, that's, that's a fairly good lathe. The Herald. Yeah. The Herald's a, br a brilliant lathe for the price. Yeah. Tim has said he like the record power maxi one next, I think. Well, I know somebody who's just bought the second hand one. Yes, yeah, so I do. The thing about the maxi one is that it's um it's a reproduction of a very, very good uh, Australian lathe, which was the, the Woodfast. That was a, a very good Australian lathe, and I think the, the Maxi one is a copy of it. And that just been an offer as well at record? Um, not too sure, to tell you the truth. I'm going to put a little foot on this. Yeah, I'm pretty sure when we were looking the other night um, that they were on offer, but Yeah, uh, Tim's just said, yeah, the, the two grand on the nose, I think that's for a new maxi one. But then it's like most things, isn't it? If you buy twice, if you buy cheap, you buy twice. Yeah. So, yeah, buy once, cry once. That's what they say, isn't it? Exactly. Where it is? You know, when you put tools down, you never find them. Do you have that problem, boys? Oh yes. For in my in my workshop, it's hardly surprising. Yeah, yours is normally under the shavings, mate. <laughs> yeah, normally. I hoovered before the life. And then it's I hoover again be, after. It's going to be worse after Tuesday as well. Yeah, sadly, uh, I know a guy who's just been diagnosed with terminal cancer and I've just bought all of his wood turning tools off him. Is that the guy that's been advertising stuff on Facebook as well? near you um postcodes like dg3 or something yes that'll be him what the, what 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 page was that on scott can you remember i think it might have been wood turning uk because he's got one of the um record power air filters on there isn't he he has yeah that'll be him yes I'm if he's got any tools on there don't try and buy them because they're already sold and all of all of his wood sold as well. Yeah, no, it was it was the air filter I was more interested in. Right, well I'll um I'll ask him on Tuesday how much he's wanting for it. I think he had one ten. Is okay. what he put on um on Facebook. Right. We need to come up with a new name for this drill as well. The other one was fake, really. Don't know what to call this one. Mike. Mike. Call it Mac. Mac. Makita Mac. Yeah. Because I've called the new one. I've called the new one Walty. Walty. <laughs> Walty. Because <laughs> it's, it's a DeWalt. <laughs> I'm not normally a big fan of Makita drills, but... Yeah, but Colin said he saw that too, uh, bargain. He had the, the powered face shield as well. That powered face shield he only bought earlier on this year. It's never been out of the box. Yeah, that was the 
That's GSP, the GSP one he's got. Mm. Yeah, it is. I can't get in here with a drill. Have I missed somebody coming in? Bernard. Oh, they're on about drill names, are they? <laughs> oh, right, sorry, Bernard. sorry. Bernard the drill. Alan. <laughs> oh, Cl Clive's coming. Hi, Clive. From Hello, Snakes Clive. Walk. Snakes. Mama Snakes. Right, Wood Turnings by Barry has said that his Coronet Herald is going up for sale very soon. You're not giving up, are you, Barry? Or are you buying something bigger? Or, or what are you getting instead? Yeah. Uh. A little bit of tear up just on the top. Right, I'm just going to drill. Put in the link to the uh, auction again. Yeah. Just to make sure people remember it. Oh, Barry's going for a Stratos. With the, which one, Barry? Ooh, nice. Ah, I know what else I forgot to do at the beginning that I was meant to mention. I mentioned Claire. Um, I want to say a massive congratulations and well done to Will Stan, um, who achieved three world records in one day the other day. Um, I think he was scuba diving for about five hours in the end. So, wow. Massive well done to Dan. Nice. So, Barry is going for the FU-230, the Stratos FU-230, which is, I think, is the mid-size one. Nice lathe. It is a very nice lathe. Right. I won't RPM Woodworks with... is in. I won't bore you with burning in the uh, my logo in the bottom. But what we'll do now is we'll put on the old conversation starter. <laughs> I thought you were using a colour it. No, I'll colour the next bit. Oh, okay. I've got another bit of boring beach. We'll colour that. We'll use some uh, Yorkshire grit on this one, I think. I don't know about you boys, but I'm not a big fan of beach. I think it's a bit bland and. Oh, I am. What you keen of it? Oh yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a lovely wood to turn. Um, and it all depends um, on whereabouts on the tree that it's cut from. But a lot of it is not not that bland at all. Right. I tend to end up with bland bits. I normally that's why I normally end up just colouring it. So there's some uh, Yorkshire grit. Any exciting projects I coming mean, up, Steve? Um, through turn or work? Never, never exciting <laughs> for work. Um, turning, turning. Um, no, I'm going to be finishing off my hollow form piece I started two weeks ago on Friday night. Um, I've actually hollowed it out now. It was pretty close at the bottom. I got a bit carried away. I bought a Simon Hope Pro Hollow six mil cut. Oh yeah. Yeah, and uh, uh -huh. I got I got a little bit carried away at the bottom, and um, you can see the light for it, so it's a bit thin at the bottom. So I got to be a bit delicate. So, um, <laughs> but I hollered the rest. Funnily, out. I, I, I think Mark did that the first time he used it as well. Oh, I couldn't. I was just going. You know, you just go. go you go, oh, it's just kind of lovely. And I thought I better just check it. And I looked down, and you could oh, just see the light there. coming. Through. You could see the light coming through. I thought, well, yeah, that's thin enough. <laughs> So anyway, I, I, I feathered the rest out, hollowed out the inside of it, and um, I'm going to finish it off Friday night. And then um, Sunday, I'm going to be finishing off the cauldron. <coughs> I have actually made the handle for the cauldron and fitted that because I, I didn't want to be messing around with that too much. So um, and basically, I want to add the lathe. So um, 
I, I wanted to pass it off. And um, oh, okay. but other than that, no, I'm, I want to start trying to do a few more hollow forms because I, I might actually quite enjoy doing that vase more than I oh, thought I was going to. Good. So I, I love doing I love doing hollow forms. Yeah, right, the spider spid is uh, is just come in and he is oh, yeah. uh, saying hi all, talking about Yorkshire grit. Uh, what with the sale of it and everything, will any of you guys be demoing it at Harrogate? Uh, no, we won't. Uh, Glenn won't have a stand at Harrogate for Yorkshire Grit. Uh, he will be there. He's going along as a punter, uh, but he won't have a stand. And unless somebody is um, using it on another stand, there won't be a stand actually dem demoing Yorkshire Grit at Harrogate. <laughs> Pete's twisted trees, fifty coats of lacquer, Steve. That's not exciting, <laughs> Pete. That's just repetitive. <laughs> I'm hoping that this wax. I'm hoping this new stuff from Martin's going to cut the the coating time down when it comes out. Apparently, he's that, bringing out he a, already the wax. does a lacquer, doesn't he? Yeah, he's bringing out a lacquer that apparently you can get a mirror finish on two to three coats rather than ten. Is this that oh, new right. professional range that he's bringing yeah, out? Yeah, yeah, he's now bringing out the professional range. He's doing a gloss black in that as well, isn't he? And a satin so, black or something as well. Yeah, so... Uh, yeah, and a satin, a satin black as well, yeah. Yeah, so he's also doing a satin lacquer as well, which would be good. Cool. Right. Yeah. Barry, Barry saw the vase last night. He popped around, and it is definitely thin <laughs> at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> but the good thing is you can't see it from the outside, which is perfect. <laughs> so we will swap chunks, just because these have got gripper jaws on, and the other one's got me dovetail jaws on. I think Mike will still be there. Spider spin. I shall be going. No, I think. Um, I don't know if he was talking about Mike there or yeah, I think Walt so. the drill. All oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I to tell you the truth, I don't know if I'm going or not. I have had an offer of a lift down there, um, just for I don't know what day. The deal's going down, but he said, if I wanted to go, he'd pop in and pick me up on the way down. But that would just be for the one day. I'm certainly not going for the weekend. Yeah. I'll be there Saturday and Sunday. I can't get down Friday because I'm working. So. Yeah, yeah Pete's just on... said that. Oh, yeah. Go on, Steve. You, you started. Um, that's Martin's on Pat Carroll's Meet the Woodturner on Sunday night, so. Make sure you guys go and check that out, and no doubt be talking about his new products on there. I'll be there whatever day Dale's going. Right, Emma has uh, said, Auntie Jo said, no rush, but thank you. And she's going to have to go if she needs to walk her friend's dog, because uh, she's dog sitting at the moment. Um, well, she's away. I love you, bro. They are amazing. Lots of kisses. Oh, so Mike's not going. Reckon Sorry, mate. Make Mike's not going to Harrogate. Reckon Pete's reckon Mike can't make it. Oh, that's a shame. All oh, right, I thought I thought he was maybe going to be on the same and hope stand again. And Pete's going on the Friday and Saturday. Yeah. So will Brian. Oh, you want to change your camera, Friday. Scott? Sorry, mate. I think Brian and Mark are there Friday and Saturday as well. Are you going, Steve? Yeah, I'll be there Saturday, Sunday, mate. Cool. I'm looking forward to it. Been the first event I've been to since before COVID. That'd be nice to meet up with some people again. Bring in Nick. Who will be? Um, well, I'm trying to. Um, I'm trying to persuade her. 
for those of you in the UK who haven't been to Harrogate, uh, and if you're a wood woodworker, not necessarily a woodturner, just a, a woodworker, it is the best show out there. That's why I made the commitment not to go to Makers because I think Makers is great to meeting up and for the the YouTube side of things, but Harrogate is more for the wood the woodworking side of things. Yeah. Oh, definitely, definitely. Design change. Design change. Do you want half that blank then? Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to persuade Nick to come because I'm Terry from TJ Turn. He's going. Ruth yep. is going. Ruth's going shopping. I said, well, you can go shopping with Ruth for me and Terry go to the event. How's that? And she's going, yeah, but I might want to go, go to the event. And I'm like, well, you've got to make your mind up what you want to do. <laughs> I'm going anyway. So your choices. Well, if you that happened, want to that, treat you and buy that, that happened the last time, didn't it? The, the last time we were there, Steve. Yeah, they went shopping on the Sunday. Did Nicky go? Yeah, yeah, Nicky yeah they Case went shopping went on the, the Sunday. Sh there was a Christmas market on, weren't there? In the town. That's went, right, yeah. Christmas shopping. Trevor's case is now to that age of 17. She don't, she, she don't want to come, but she don't want to miss out. So it's like, and Nick don't yeah. like leaving her, so it's <laughs> like catch 22, really. But I don't mind either way. I'm going either way, so it doesn't bother me. But <laughs> I'll either have an expensive weekend or a cheap weekend. <laughs> we had a great weekend the last one we were at, didn't we? Yeah, it was good. My good lady good. wife don't like events like that. I'm just like, okay. <laughs> okay. Well, I said to her, the reason is, uh, obviously her doing the Sunday lunchtime live with me, a lot of people are going to know her. Yeah. Yeah. So so it's not like she's a nobody. You know, I mean, people are going to know who she is. And I said to her, I said, they want to speak to you more than they speak to me anyway. <laughs> or is it you said last night, Wayne, on your live? I never said a word. I knew, that wasn't me. That was, that, was, that was my ugly twin brother that said that. Why, what was that? Go on, you spill the beans. <laughs> it's not Steve's it lunchtime went, live, it's Nicky's lunchtime live on a Sunday. It's, well, it is, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> they don't come out, I'm just the geezer um, in the background. <laughs> yeah, Steve that's Hinton. what I said. Uh, Mark and Jennifer have got their tickets for Saturday and Sunday. Oh, that's good. Oh, I'm assuming it's Mark and Jennifer. He's just Ooh. said, oh, yeah, he said he's got our tickets. That's right. So it will be Mark and Jennifer. So look forward to meeting up with you. So we've gone for a small shape bowl on this one. But what we've done is we've left the center so the stick can sit out and then as the bits fall off. They will go in there. I think this is similar to the design that uh, I can never remember what Tanish Dubois' first name is. Daniel. Yeah. Um, similar to the design that he did on his video. I did a couple before that I took because I was meant to do this live a few weeks ago, um, and then things got in the way. So the ones I did as demo pieces, um, I'd actually got a thin bit of aluminium bar and put it in the centre and drilled into that. Um, but didn't, didn't get them prepped in time tonight. Mark just said, damn, do I have to take Jennifer? Ooh. 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 Savage. Talk. <laughs> Savage. Yeah, don't say too much, Huey, because she'll want some of the revenue. You she'll want part of that 0 0.04 pence per live. <laughs> I don't get any revenue. I do it for the fun. It's nice just being in your workshop and chatting with people and mm, very much so. having people join in. Like I've always said, if I didn't enjoy it, I wouldn't do it. No. Exactly. Sometimes it's what you need after a dodgy day at work and just hanging out with some friends. Yep. Come in the workshop, make a mess. If you make something worthwhile, then fair enough. But talk to your mates, share ideas. And forget about what you've dealt with during the day. How 
How are we doing on time? You're at 10 to 9. All right. Probably going to go to about half past if that's right with you boys. But if you have to drop out, that's I'm fine. Nick's at, the, fine we. Nick's at the gym, so I'm just, I'm, I am was only sitting watching, I'll tell you what, I was watching Hamburg Hill. I ain't seen it for years. So I was just flicking through Netflix and I thought, oh, I'll watch this. Hamburg Hill. Hamburg Hill. The war film. Never seen it? No, I've never seen it. So this is Yorkshire Grit. Should have stopped the live and put it on, but I forgot. When do you reckon we'll see the increase in the stores for the Yorkshire Grit? End of the year? Yeah, um, I think it might be a wee while yet. Yeah. Has Glyn totally stopped making it now then? Yeah. No, well, he's making it for... Yeah. He he's making it for them. Yeah. Who is it? I was on a website the other day and I've noticed it's gone from a... A tenner a tin to twelve quid a tin. I was like, okay. Some people are gonna be bad, some people are gonna be profiteering on it and they with the new prices. Yeah. So that's the Yorkshire Great. Let's go back to do you know what? Bit of a chat going on between Shug and uh, Mark Stroughton at the moment. <laughs> at Screwfix Live, I picked up three can openers. So I thought, I'm always, cr- opening, I'm always opening my pots with screwdrivers, so I don't pick them up. You know, I'll find where I've put them. <laughs> I thought that's what the skew chisel was for. <gasps> a savage. I won't do that in my skew. I always use a straight, I always use a square edge. <laughs> I've got a terminal screwdriver that's just on the bench. Where was the screw fix uh, event in Scott? It was in Farnborough. Uh, when was it? Two or three weeks ago. Any promotions or is it just normal shop prices? No, so they do, it's 10% off everything in the screw fix catalogue. So you can go there and order stuff and pick it up from your home store or get it delivered. Um, Milwaukee, they had the biggest store there, but I wouldn't buy their tools because they're just overpriced. Um, Evolution had some good deals on. So I was was very tempted to buy the power file at Screwfix Live. Um... But it would have left me short for the rest of the month, so I waited until I got my back pay and then brought it. Is that one with the 20 mil belt on it? Um, it's the, yeah, the little belt. Yeah. But yeah if you lot, have a, a word with them, um, if you have a, a quick chat with them, um, Mr. Big Feet, he might be able to get you some belts. He got me loads of belts for my power file. I'll have a I don't know if they're the same length. I don't know if the Evolution one's the same length belt as the the Black and Decker one. Uh, I don't know. Right, let's just. So it's this whole... yeah. Sorry. This whole here is what's left from the ring centre. Um. So it also leaves me the ideal point just to go in for the bit for the hold the stick. Yeah. Right, so Mark L has had some success cutting the gasket out. There we go. Another little simple one. Nice. There you go. Uh, right, let's grab this bit of beach. Change chunks. Because I want to 
grip of jaws. I'm waiting for Charmwood to uh, get the stock of their new gear sets and then I'll be back to three chocks rather than two chocks. I can't remember who it was. Somebody put out a um, video on YouTube, I think it was yesterday or the day before, about the new SK100. Chuck from Axminster. I've not seen it. Which, look, which looks a very nice chuck. What's well, been uh, looks modified? A or... build than the... Yeah, it's been modified. It, it's got it's a solid body one now, not, not an open back. It's got the square chuck key instead of the, a bit like the, the Jacob's chuck key type thing. Right, okay. Yeah. Um, it, it just looks a lot more solid than the old SK100. That's anything that lets record power down. They've got different chuck keys for all the different chucks. Yeah. Well, that was the same with Axman. So the SK100 was a, um, the one I've got. Is It's got like the Jacob's chuck type of chuck. Right. Yep. Key. Yep. But the um the SK one one four is a square one. Right. Let's go back to the other can. So as Colin says, was it Jigsy who showed the chuck? No, it wasn't no, it wasn't Jigsy. No, it was somebody else. Oh, I've got to say thank you, Steve, as well. For, well, watching your video, was it Sunday, your live, where you mentioned about the parting tool, cutting uphill? Yeah. Yeah. I've never done that before. I've always cut on the thingy, and I thought, what? It's make a bit of difference, doesn't it? Much better. Using the tool properly. How do you mean? Well, if you put a lot of people in at 90 degrees, then they say it's acting as a scraper. Yeah. Oh, that's like a scraper rather yep. than a cutter. Yeah, yep. so if you yeah. keep it up a little bit, well, that's yeah. cuts. You, yeah. you always, you, to start with the part, you, you always have the handle. You always have the handle pointing down. Yeah, I've never done it. So I've you, always had it at what, 90 degrees. And now, no, no, I've noticed not. I've bent the blade on this one. <laughs> Look, some yeah, now, so, it's now like a banana. <laughs> Um, and the blade. Yeah, what, out. what you do is you, you, you actually you start towards the the top of the piece, and as you're cutting down to the center, once you get down to the center, you should be ending up right on center point. Yeah. No, well, I've never done that, and it wasn't until Steve said in his live the other day I was like, ah, didn't know that. No. See, I'm not. So, so you've never watched any of my lives then. I have, but I've just not paid that much attention. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh. Not, not. I'll just dig in my hole. I'm gonna shut yeah, up. Yeah, I'll, I'll shut up if I was you. <laughs> See, Wayne's gone quiet now. You know you're worried when Wayne goes quiet. Uh, what, was it trouble? Uh, right, Barry Chitty's put in. Was it Peter Kelly? He's talking about the um, the SK100. I can't honestly remember Barry who it was that put it out. I didn't realise Pete Kelly's been putting videos out. He's a member of our club. I know he puts loads of posts up of his work, but I've not actually seen him do a video yet. Is it the same Pete Kelly? Is that the question? I don't know. It might be a different one. I'm just going to have a look and see if I can find it. I'm just 
hogging some of this timber away at the minute because I don't want it. So Pete's Baxman has had a video out themselves on the 30th release date. And Michael Gibson did an unboxing one too. New one coming out on Friday from a dodgy character. Obviously, that's Sass Pete, I reckon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So I've, I had a big axe minster truck. I don't know what it was, but I didn't like it. But these little Charnwood Viper threes I love. A lot of Nova talk about at the moment. A lot of people buying the Nova chucks. Yeah, no, Nova's been uh, a popular ch chuck for quite a while. What do you mean? Um, what do you mean, Brian? Pete's but Pete's not that dodgy. What do you mean, not that dodgy? I wouldn't said Pete was dodgy at all, but you know, <laughs> that's indicating that Pete is dodgy, isn't it? Yeah, I know. I don't know what Brian's trying to say. All oh, right, right, right. Pete, the Pete put in it was Michael Gibson did an unboxing one. Yeah. Right. right on a scale of one to ten on dodginess. <laughs> Where would Pete be? <laughs> Pete? <laughs> Poor old Pete. He's going to regret putting that comment in there. <laughs> yeah. One, one being not that dodgy and ten <laughs> being totally dodgy. Who are we talking about? Pete? Yeah. I've, I've got to go on the not so dodgy side, so I'm going to go one. There you Pete's, go. Pete's got a heart of gold. <laughs> Let's try the smallest skew. <laughs> oh, Pete's put lots. Not me putting the video no. out Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Drury's Woodturner is asking, what sharpening system does everyone use? He just got the Robert Sorby. Um, I think that must be the Pro Edge Deluxe Kit. Yep. And he says it's a game changer. Uh, that's what I use. Yep, same. that's what I've got. Same as me. I love it. So easy to use. Ever since I've been in the wood turning world, there's always been this big discussion between Tormek users and Pro Edge users. <laughs> And it's, I think it's going to be going for the next 20 years because everybody has their own preference, don't they? Yeah. Well, they do. I mean, it's not necessary with with the Tormek. I mean, you get um, you can get sharpening systems just to use on a basically on a grinder. Yeah, well, or the just CB, put the CBN the wheel on the grinder. System, yeah, yeah you've yeah. got the Wolverine. You've got the one way. You you've got cheapo cheapo productions on eBay. Right, Douglas is asking what grip do you use? I, I don't. If you're referring to the Pro Edge, Douglas, I use um, a 60 grit to reprofile, and I use a 120 to sharpen. Reminds me, actually, why not still owe you a 60 grit belt? It's two nags that took so long. <laughs> Wayne sorted out my little bowl gouge for me, Steve. He did? Yeah, it's only little, look. <laughs> it's a beast of a bowl gouge. Probably actually didn't need one that size, but... It was there. It was cheap. It's got to be done, in it? Now, Jeff Horn, talk, talking about sharpening and talking about the belts on the on the Pro Edge and stuff like that, Jeff Hornung um, did a, a live on Facebook, oh, it must be a couple of years ago now at least, um, explaining why you don't need to go to the likes of 400 or 600 when you're sharpening your, your wood turning tools. 
if you if you sharpen a wood turning tool at 60 grit, it's sharp. It's just not very fine. If you shot if you go to 400, it's a very fine edge you've got on there, but it doesn't last. What you want is something in between. Uh, and you still want to have something that's oh, going to have a um, I forget the name of it now. Any anyway, a, a one twenty on will sharpen your wood turning tools. A little burr, it'll still leave a little burr on the end as well, yeah. and it 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 lasts quite a long time as well. Well, like you say, the finer the grit you go, the sharper the edge is, but the quicker that that's weaker. So you dull it a lot quicker, don't you? Exactly. Yeah. See that that's the difference between using a wood turning tool and using um a carbon chisel. A carbon chisel you want that really fine edge on there for getting a decent cut on the wood when you're using it by hand. Yeah. You're actually you've got a piece of wood there that's spinning at a hell of a lot of RPMs, so you don't need it to be really, really fine. No, when I do my chisels for work, I always take them up to about uh, 600 grit, in that little fine edge. Yeah. Well, like you say, when you're cutting yeah. four hinges and all that, you need that fine edge. That's it. That's it, exactly. And you don't need it for anybody out there that has got the pro edge. You don't actually need to buy the Sorby belts. And um, certainly Ed Oliver has a uh, replacement belts, which are cheaper than the Sorby ones. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, who is it? Klingspore. If you can find anybody that uh, deals with Klingspore abrasives, they do belts for the pro edge as well, which are around about. I think half the price of the the Sorby ones. I buy mine off eBay, um, and they cost me I think it's six ninety nine belt. Because they're oxide. Oh belts, no no no, Klingsport. No no, Klingsport do the, do them a hell of a lot cheaper than that. If oh. you go to Yandels um, and, and see if you can find any of the abrasives by Klingsport at Yandels, I was down there not so long back and they were selling 10 a set of 10 120 belts for 35 quid no th 38 quid cool right let's color this bit just want a bit of scrap wood the biggest problem people have is they overheat the belt and therefore they the the, the, the abrasiveness just melts yeah i mean a belt yeah. last ages if you don't overheat it I don't use I don't use um, the oxide belts. I tend to use the uh, ceramic belts. Yeah. Uh, Adam at I Love Wood Turning has said the the Seat ceramic belts. That's S E I T. Uh, are nice for a pro edge, and he said they're around about three pound fifty a piece. That's a good price. Nice. Right. Let's cover the laving paint. So this is just chestnuts, ebonizer lacquer. Just a question, Scott. Yes, mate. Why did you burn in between the lines if you're going to paint it black? <laughs> <laughs> because there was a little burr of wood that I couldn't get oh, out. Okay. I tried sanding it. I tried getting in there with a tool. Couldn't get it. So I went, do you know what? The burning burn wire would get it. Hmm. There you uh, go. It's a bit of cheating, Steve. <laughs> well, no, I just, I just, I didn't know, I didn't know when you burn it. I thought he was going to leave the bottom part a different colour. Nah. All right. So we're going to use the Joe Sonia iridescent paints. I am just helping the lacquer a little bit with a heat gun, bearing in mind to keep it as far away as possible. Otherwise, it'll blister. Lovely. 
Right. What colours should we go for? Anyone got any preference on colours? We got Violet. turquoise. I knew Violet was going to come out from Wayne. There you go. Violet and turquoise. Go on, uh, right. Um, somebody has asked Adam where you get those seat ceramic belts from, and he's put in machinery for wood. Yeah, they're thinks. on eBay. They're on eBay, they are. Machinery for wood. And Anita Baller said orange. How unusual. But <laughs> I'm orange. sorry, Anita, but the... Um, the, the Joe Sonia Zero Descents don't come in orange. You've got turquoise, green, uh, blue, gold, red, or violet. Now, Wayne absolutely loves violet. The problem I have is trying to be random with them. That's the problem everybody has. Trying to do randoms, just... When you try to be random, you always end up with patterns. Yeah. <laughs> it's just your natural brain, isn't it? To, to make it look uniformed. <clears throat> Looks like a witch's hat. It is a little bit of a witch's hat, isn't it? I did... So I said, I was going to do this live few weeks ago so i'd made some prep pieces um took them to a craft fair just thinking oh it's something to to fill the shelf and they all went i was like oh okay <laughs> <laughs> i do that when i do a demo i always do a practice piece before i go do a demo i always take it to show you know you show this is what i'm going to show how to turn yeah every one i've taken so far sometimes yeah. can, I, can i buy that bit off of you i'm like yeah if you want to <laughs> Yeah, I think I've got four demos booked in for next year already. Which is quite nice. It's good because every time you go to one, you always get asked to do another one, don't you? Mm. The only trouble is they're getting further and further afield. I all started doing them within like a 25, 30 mile radius. Now they're getting like 50 mile away. So they're getting further and further away. But never mind. You'll get paid for your miles, don't so don't Yeah. I'm trying to think how far my furthest one is. Hampshire. I've stopped. What was that? Oh, no, something's falling on the floor. It's on the floor. It ain't going anywhere else, is it? You don't enjoy doing them, Wayne, or just can't be bothered? It's just the um, it's it's well, it's probably me age more than anything. I, I can't be bothered with the with the travelling and setting up and taking down and everything, travelling back home. It's a long day because, like, like most of the time I'm at work and then through the day, then you can rush home. You get every, I get every ready the night before, so I've just got to load the car up. So you're at work all day. Yeah. Then the, the time you got to be there for about quarter past half past six to get set up for like seven o'clock half seven start. Yeah. And then you, then you don't get finished till half nine quarter to ten, and then people want to talk to you. So you don't get away from there until yeah, the half ten time. Yeah, and a lot of the ones I was doing were all dear jobs as well. Mm. Uh, I enjoy it. I like it. I like the, the, the interaction. It's good fun. Oh, it is. Oh, yeah, definitely. The actual demo itself is <coughs> always, always fun. I've done... What have I done this year? I think I've done two this year. In actual fact, they're the only wood turning clubs I've been to this year. I haven't even been to my club since COVID restarted. Or since after COVID. I actually joined a club. I thought I'd better. I joined yeah, so... a club. I joined a club that kicked that shunned me two years ago or three years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I went back and oh, pretended right. I'd never. Okay. Well, I went. I went. Well, I went there when I first started turning, and they said, oh, "What sort of things do you?" Because I used to do a lot of resin. That my thing was resin when I first started. That was the main uh, thing I it, did. It was when you first started. That's right. And um, so I said, oh, "I do quite a lot of resin." That was it. They just stopped talking to me. I thought, oh, "Okay, fair enough." So I went again, and 
I sat beside this bloke and he got up and moved and I thought, you know what, I can't be arsed with this. So I stayed there on the night. Ooh, I didn't go back. Oh, oh I sorry if back. I swore there. <laughs> After There's the no need to be like that, is there? No. So anyway, um, then... After COVID, I thought I really would like to be a member of a club because, you know, it's nice to learn from others and, you know, hopefully help others. And uh, so I went there and I just went as a nobody. And they said to me, this bloke came to me, he said, how long have you been turned? And I said, oh, not long. I said, about three, three and a half years. He go, all right. Well, then some bloke come walking. He go, hello, Steve, how are you doing? I'm like, oh, hello. <laughs> Busted. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, oh, hello. I said, I'm sorry. I don't know who you are. He said, oh, what? He said, I come in your Sunday lunchtime live every Sunday. And I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ. I, can't, I didn't want anybody to know. And within within <laughs> within a half an hour, two people recognized me. So that was like, so then that was like on my first night on the in the club, I was then volunteered to do a demo the following month. <laughs> so I thought, oh, well, well, in for a penny, in for a pound. Yeah, why not? Mark's got to All go. Right. See you later, Mark. See you later, Mark. Thanks, Mark. Sometimes it's just nice just to go to a club, just have a cup of coffee. Yeah. Well, that was my plan. Nothing with the boys. <laughs> that's good because the club is growing, so that's good. I mean, when I went there in last uh, February, they had 18 members um, because of they had 80 before COVID, but obviously people move on and pass away and this that, and the other. So, um, but now we've got, we're back up to 40, I think 42 or 43 members, which is good. Club's growing. Good. Oh, nice. Good. Uh, Barry Chitty has said he has got, yes. They have noticed you haven't been there. Yes. At the club, that is. I'm <laughs> hoping, I need to look and see what my rotor is. Um, I'm hoping so like Sunday just gone was my only day off I've just done um, four days one off three nights and then I had Sunday so it was like I could go to club or I could just sit and chill and do nothing or come in the workshop do some turning watch Steve which is what I did Thank you very much. I made, I, feel 75, I made 75 quid up selling the bits I'd turn straight away. There you go. Uh, yeah, I, I, Barry Wood, Barry's from Wood Creation. He lives up the road from me. Mm. And uh, I asked him if he wanted to go to the club, and now he's a member. He's done a demo for him, so he's done well. Cool. Excellent. Right. Adam at I Love Wood Turning has said he's just bought... Um, a Veedman hook tool. Wish me luck. Looking forward to learning to use it. I wish I had one. I think they're absolutely brilliant. Is that the one? Was like? A, is that like a like ring? That. Is that like a like a real sharp edge hook thing? Is that what he's on about? The ring. Yeah, it, it, it's like like a half a ring tool. Right. Okay. Like a half Not a like ring tool. Oh right. Okay. Tool. I see. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but it, it, if you if you cut half of that ring off, that that's yep. what the hook tool is like. Okay. Absolutely brilliant for end, end green hollowing. So how would you sharpen that? Would you sharpen that with like a diamond uh, file thing? Yeah, you, you use a, a diamond file. Yeah, definitely. There we so go. Pete's, Pete's like foolishly Pete agreed to do a uh, demo. They look scarier than they are. <laughs> Sorry, what was that, Steve? I said Pete has said he's foolishly agreed to do a live demo in February. First one in many years. You'll be all right. You You'll go. be fine, Pete. So we don't really need the heat tool. Joe's on your dry pretty quick. Right. Uh, Drew Rees Wood Turner said he wants to join a club. He's in Basingstoke, Hampshire. The best thing to do, uh, Drew Rees, is go on to the AWGB website and you can actually they have a map of where all their affiliate clubs are. Gary Glass has just come in. Evening, Gary. Got um, Gary. where's Hampshire Wood Turners? They got a search as well. If you type in Hampshire, that should tell you the clubs around that area, shouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. Or um, drop Martin a 
message up. Um, Hampshire Sheen, because he's not that far from Basingstoke. Well, he's not. I don't, don't know if he's a member of any clubs or. I would have thought with the. Sh- but the, store, the though, EW, they would have known where the local EWGB, clubs are. EWGB. Well, they may well do. EWGB website has actually got a map of where all the affiliate clubs are within the UK. Yeah, and most clubs are AWGB recognised anyway, aren't they? Yeah. Numbers and everything. That's sad. Oh, look. I need to get a new tin of gloss lacquer out. Spoiling you. So this is just chestnuts. Gloss lacquer. And then, once this is off, we will call it a night. So I'll give that a minute to dry. I'm doing that. I'll throw that over there, throw that over there. Let's start making the workshop smell stinky and horrible, shall we? What? Other than the lucky, you mean? Yeah, we're going to light some uh, incense. Just so you can see what they're going to look like. And Gary's just joined up to the um, Wood Turning 360 yesterday. That's dry enough. Right. Let's get that cut off. I'm going to put the band dry. And then we'll call it a night. Thank you, everyone, for coming in. Um, don't forget, please check out that link at the top of the chat. Um, this is going to be, hopefully, another good fundraising effort organised by Steve um, for a very uh, worthwhile... Not, not just me, it's everybody. It's not just oh, me. everyone, but yeah. Um, it's going to be... And I've, um, I've just I've just put the link into the actual auction as well. Yeah, hopefully it's going to be a fun night. It's not about just raising money, it's about having a bit of fun as well. So um, yeah. if we can do both, that's even better. I might pick your brains in a few weeks, Steve. There's not a lot um, to pick, so it won't take long. Well, the Alzheimer's Society... Um, I've actually got an elf day uh, on the 2nd of December. So I'm thinking about trying to do something turning wise, raise a little bit of money that way. Mm-hmm. But elf fiend. So, that's in the shavings. But I need to have a look at what my rotor and stuff is. I won't do that now. I'll do that after. Well, I'm always up for helping charities, for sure. Yeah. I reckon my mum brought me some dud incense burners. Incense sticks. <laughs> I think they're moist. It was funny, because the bloke selling them was French, and he was speaking to me, I ain't got a clue what he was saying. <laughs> <laughs> I don't speak French. Right. It wasn't Barry, was it? <laughs> no, nah. he had some dodgy looking French pastries as well. Hmm. All right, let's, let's try. Give this one a light. See, told you, I don't want to burn, do they? <laughs> no wonder they were free for a fiver. Here we go, right. So. 
This is the first one. Um, that's just got one of the cones on the metal plaque. Um, but you can, if you want, use it for a stick. I don't know where I shop door in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> There's the second one. Um, again, all the stuff will fall into the bowl. That's just a little bit of sycamore. And then uh, the painted one. Bit of oh, colour. Like uh, there you go. There I we like go. The, I like the second one. That's nice, the second one. Um, let's bring the boys back on stream. Simple projects that you can do out of the silly blanks that you get in the big sacks that they put in there just to fill the weight up. So thank you very much, Steve and Wayne, for worming. Thank you, thanks for inviting me. No problem. Thank Any you, time. everyone, for coming in. Um, not sure what we're doing next week. Um, I will be in Scotland, but I am planning on doing something. So same with a difference. We shall see. Hopefully, right. hopefully n not falling off step ladders. <laughs> well, he's the tumble turner after all. They're paranoid about me falling you know, <laughs> off putting these lights up. Well, I can oh, understand it, really. I've, 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 I know your record history. I haven't fallen for a little while. <laughs> it's a bloody concrete <laughs> floor. <laughs> Hasn't I'm fallen a for a little while. I'll, I'll come with a self-inflating device, you know. I bounce back <laughs> up. <laughs> right. On that note, I am going to hit the button, um, and I shall see you all next week. Take care for now. Take care, guys. See you tomorrow night.